the parable of the sower from Mark's version in chapter 4. Again, Jesus was teaching beside the sea, and such a great crowd came to gather around him that he had to get into a boat and move outside the shore a ways. The crowd was on the land beside the sea. And Jesus said, told them many things in parables. Listen, he said, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came quickly and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it had no depth of soil. And because it had no depth of soil, it grew up very quickly. But when the sun came out, it scorched it, because it had no depth of soil. Still other seed fell on thorny ground, and when it grew up, the thorns choked it out, and it bore no fruit. And some seed fell on good soil growing up, increasing, and yielding 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. If you have ears to hear, listen. In this story that we've just heard, there are four kinds of soil. Lydia has told you in the introduction that we're going to talk about hardened hearts, or hearts as, that are hard as a rock, and sometimes that does describe us. Our hearts can be turned and hardened against our neighbor, our hearts can be turned and hardened against God. Is there any hope for such people, for hard-hearted people? Well, in this parable, one of the kinds of soils is this rocky ground kind of heart. Jesus really probably is talking here about the disciples. Some of the scholars that study this story in Mark say that these four kinds of soil are four different groups of hearers in the gospel. And the rocky ground people are the disciples. When Jesus explains the parable a few verses later, he'll say, these are the ones who, when they hear the word of God, they immediately receive it with joy, but they have no root in themselves. And when trials and tribulations come on account of the word, immediately they fall away. Now that line, immediately they fall away, occurs again later on in the gospel when Jesus is with the with the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he says to them, he's quoting an Old Testament passage, when the sheep is struck, that's referring to himself, the sheep will immediately fall away. Same term used there about the disciples. Or we can go back to chapter 3. Simon gets a new name from Jesus. He calls him Peter or Rocky. Now in Matthew's Gospel, when Peter is called the rock. We take that as being the foundational, his foundation of faith. But in Mark's gospel, it may well be that his name, Rocky, is a symbol of these hard-hearted kind of people. Rocky. Let me tell you then three boat stories. There are three boat stories in Mark's gospel. And Mark, when he wants to portray the disciples, almost always does it in these brackets of threes. First in chapter 4, the boat story. Jesus has been teaching that day with the disciples, and when the day is over, he gets in the boat with them. They push out from the shore, out into the sea, and a great storm comes up. But Jesus is sleeping, not paying any attention to the storm, and the disciples are getting very fearful. So finally they wake him up. They said, teacher, don't you care that we're perishing here? Jesus gets up, says to the wind, stop, to the waves, be still. And they do. And then he turns to the disciples and said, why are you afraid? Don't you have any faith? And Mark says that the disciples were stunned by Jesus. They didn't understand what was happening. Who is this, they said, that even wind and waves obey him? Why do they ask who he is? They've been with him from the very beginning. Are they getting nothing? Second boat story, Mark chapter 6. This time, Jesus has just fed 5,000 people. And he tells the disciples, you get in the boat, go out, I'm going up into the hills to pray. So Jesus is up in the hills praying. The disciples are on the boat crossing to the other side. Some hours later, Jesus looks out and he sees them a long ways away. They're having a terrible time rowing against the wind. So, and you remember this story too, he walks out on the water in their general direction, although not necessarily going to them. And they see him and they're terrified. They cry out, it's a ghost. So he goes over then and says, why are you afraid? It's me. It's me. Don't be afraid. And then we read, as Mark puts it, the disciples were astounded. And they didn't understand 
because their hearts were hardened. There you have it said explicitly about the disciples, that their hearts are hardened. There's one other boat story, and that's in chapter 8. This is after the feeding of the 4,000, and that's an important element because this bread is going to figure in the story. Jesus and the disciples get in the boat. And the disciples are concerned that they only have one loaf of bread. And Jesus says to them, why are you talking about bread? Are your hearts hardened? Do you not understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes that don't see and ears that don't hear? When I fed the 5,000, how many loaves were left over? How many basketfuls left over? And one of the disciples answered, and I think very meekly, 12? And when I fed the 4,000, how many baskets did you collect? Seven? Don't you understand, Jesus says? Don't you get it yet? Their hearts indeed seem to be hardened. We move later in the gospel, chapter 14, the Garden of Gethsemane. Most of you remember that story as well. And Jesus wants to pray. And he wants the disciples to stay awake with him in prayer. They fall asleep. He comes, wakes them, tries it again, they fall asleep. And as usual in Mark, they fall asleep three times. They can't stay awake while he prays. And that's the last we hear of the disciples in the Gospel of Mark. They are sleeping in Gethsemane. We hear a little bit more about one of the disciples. His name is Peter. Peter followed Jesus for the trial, stood outside with the bystanders, and a little maid came along and said, Aren't you with the Galilean? You're a Nazarene too, I think. Jesus said, I, I don't know what you're, Peter said, I don't know what you're talking about. And the maid said to the others, I'm sure it's him. I'm sure he's with them. And again, he said, no, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Finally, the bystanders said, yeah, we've seen you with him, haven't we? And he curses this time, Peter. He curses. I don't know the man. And then Peter heard the cock crow for the second time. And he remembered what Jesus said. This night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter wept. So we have the disciples sleeping. That's the last word we hear about them. And Peter, the last word we hear about him in, the, in this whole gospel is that he is weeping. We come then to the last chapter of the gospel. It's the Easter chapter. The women go to the tomb and they meet the angel. The angel said, you're seeking Jesus of Nazareth. He's not here. He's risen. And then has a message for the disciples. Go tell the disciples and Peter, aha, Jesus is not done with these folks. Go tell the disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee and there he will meet you as he promised. It's as if Jesus is saying, or God is saying here in this passage, I'm the sower, and I'm going to keep on sowing. I see you, disciples. I see your hardened hearts, and I'm going to keep on sowing. I see that you've turned away, but I'm the sower, and I'm going to keep on sowing. I see that your hearts are sometimes like rock, but I'm the sower, and I'm going to keep on sowing, and I'm going to sow and I'm going to sow until that seed cracks those hearts of yours and your hearts break forth with good fruit and good production. Then Jesus turns to the other disciples. Mark here paints a picture of the disciples and I really think he paints a picture of disciples in every age. Our hearts, our hearts. We are also the people who heard the word of God, have heard it maybe all our lives. But so often then when trials and tribulations come, we turn away, immediately we fall away. We may sometimes feel that people mock us for our faith and we turn away. We may experience great grief in life. Almost all of us do at some point. 
And that grief can shock us, shock us to the point where we wonder if what we believe in is worth anything at all. Or our own agendas may block us from focusing clearly and centrally on Jesus. And so our hearts are hardened. Is there any hope for hard-hearted people? Jesus says, yes, there is. I'm going to meet you in Galilee. I think Galilee for us is just those places where we hear the story of Jesus. I see that you've turned away, Jesus says, but I'm the sower and I'm going to keep on sowing. I see that your hearts are hard as rock sometimes, but I'm the sower and I'm going to keep on sowing. I see that your hearts are hard, but I'm the sower and I'm going to keep on sowing and I'm going to sow and I'm going to sow till by the power of the Spirit, the seed breaks your encrusted hearts and produces 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. If you have ears to hear, listen.